know again, it's Thursday, and it's becoming harder and harder to find good news anymore. One out of two Americans will come down with cancer, and soon it'll be almost one out of one. We have a lot of things, concepts, ideas, devices, products in the alternative health market that claim wonderful things. Some of them work, some of them don't. Some of them work a little bit, some of them work a lot. One of them that has come along in my life and is on the website at rents.com is carnivora.com. This one may be the best yet. I have never seen anything more encouraging after these, uh, well, a couple of years I've known about it, than Carnivora. We're going to talk to Richard Ostro now. He is the man who owns the company and is promoting it so effectively, but doing so obviously very carefully because we all know the guidelines, the do's and don'ts, the boundaries, the parameters, the perimeters that the FDA and other CDC-like agencies permit and uh, will draw for us. So we have to stay within those boundaries. Understand there's a lot more we could say about this that we won't be able to tonight, but let me welcome, with that, Richard Ostro back to the program. Hi, Richard. Thanks for being here. This is particularly encouraging for me to find something that really works as well as Carnivora does. And each time we do a program and hear from more and more people, uh, it gives me even greater hope that there are ways around the cancer death sentence. And that's what most people see it as, unfortunately. And when you consider the so-called treatment for it, in many cases, of course, the treatment itself is a death sentence, or damn close to it. So anyway, hi, Richard. How are you? Jeff, great to be here, my friend. How are you? Good, good. Now, the idea of cancer proliferating is not a new one. Um, It is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse as we continue to toxify and poison our bodies, our minds, and our souls, for that matter, as well. Because, as you know, and as most of you folks listening know, if one is under severe stress, if if one has uh, financial problems or whatever, uh, the idea of stress itself can degrade the immune system. Add to that the simple fact that the average American processed foods diet is read by the body as a deadly poison, which is what it is, ultimately, cumulatively, sometimes even less than that. It's damn near quick. But the idea that the immune system has to fight the food we eat is absurd, but that's what's happening. So most people are walking around with a half-functional immune system at best. So they're in trouble to begin with. And then when you add other uh, issues of the emotion, uh, as we know, anger, for example, one minute of anger can really wreck the immune system for at least eight hours. Uh, This I've talked about for many, many years. Uh, the idea that constant job stress over the years uh, can do this to you, um, physical problems uh, as well. There are a lot of issues out there that people now are beginning to understand are problems, big problems. Now, let's stir into that mix the idea of constant low-level exposure to bioaccumulative radio- radiation, radioactive isotopes from Fukushima. Uh, It is in the soil all up and down the Pacific coast. It is in the pine needles. It is in the dairy. It is in the vegetables. It is in all kinds of issues that directly interface with the human being. So I'm going to stop talking, Richard, and let you bring us up to date on what's new with carnivora, and then we'll meet a special guest in a couple of minutes. Well, I guess I can start by saying there's an astronomical number of people who have inactive immune cells uh, as a result of of the lifestyles that you were just mentioning. Uh, We're speaking mostly about neutrophil white blood cells and natural killer cells, which most of us have heard of. These two cells allow us to wake up every day, uh, but they are being assaulted and degraded uh, because of the various aspects of lifestyle, I would have to say. Well, sure. Uh, I mean, just being alive in this culture is enough to make people sick. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Jeff, I always loved you. Now I know why. So in any event, many of us, many, many, and I couldn't even pick a number, uh, are walking around with a per- certain percentage of dormant, inactive immune cells. And part of what carnivora does, and this is what we're allowed to say in uh, pharmaceutical America, is that carnivora wakes up neutrophil white blood cells and natural killer cells to attack 
harmful invaders that don't belong in our bodies. Uh, that's a mouthful. Take it with more than a grain of salt. Uh, carnivore is also a powerful immune modulator. If you have allergies, for example, which means that your immune system is functioning at a very low ebb versus right. an autoimmune mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. which means it's functioning uh, to too great of a degree, Carnivore is going to take that over-functioning immune system and bring it down to uh, a homeostasis with uh, what's known as T and B cells. Uh -huh. to cause it to be not too overactive and not too underactive. What is the mechanism of mitigation? How does well, it do that? There's a ratio that Dr. Helmut Keller, who developed carnivora in Europe over 35 years ago, always discussed in his books. And that ratio, at peak efficiency, is what's known as a 1.2. Now, that number may mean nothing to anybody out there. But that means that the T suppressor cells and the the helper cells in your system are in a 1.2 ratio, which is peak immune efficiency. Uh, most people have an overactive or underactive immune system, period. And they also have a high count of inactive dormant immune cells that are not dead. They're not functioning. They're not protecting the body against the, the many, many lifestyles that assault the immune system on a daily basis. So carnivora and its 17 naturally occurring compounds are going to be at war with abnormal cells in the body. And I don't mean to say that carnivora discriminates against any one type of abnormal cell. It works against all types of abnormal cells. That's amazing that it would be able to recognize them, but it does. And you yeah, mentioned instinctively can do that. Uh huh. You mentioned NK cells, natural killer cells. Right. Which, which in the body are essential. Uh, they're cytotoxic uh, lymphocyte cells, and uh, what they do is run around looking for things to kill. But if your NK cells are compromised or tied up doing other things, they're busy, uh, you've, you've got a problem. And that's what carnivora does. Now, it's a, it comes from a variety of the Venus flytrap. Tell us about that particular variety and and. Why that plant? Why that particular plant? Venus okay. flytraps, you know, Venus flytraps, Venus flytrap, but it isn't. Okay, the late 1970s, uh, Dr. Helmut Keller, who's a German MD, theorized that the Venus flytrap has a perfect immune system. And he said, boy, if I could get that into the human body, I wonder what kind of effect that could have. And it really all started there. And this was in Maine. He was in the States at the time. Uh, and as the story goes, he spent many years and several million Deutsche Marks of his wife's royalty money doing clinical studies in Europe, which are completely unacceptable here, of course, uh, developing this product to get it into the human body mm -hmm. in a manner that would be most efficacious. And he found right. out that this product in the microgram mm -hmm. has a multifaceted effect on the human immune system, a very, very versatile, broad-spectrum effect on the human immune system, waking up uh, certain immune cells, stimulating macrophages, which are the hunters of the immune system, even mm -hmm. increasing their number, mm -hmm. causing the cytokine storms, uh, which mean that your immune system is awakened to a degree that it is going to protect you. Uh, well, so yeah. Some people say that cytokine storms, of course, can lead to an overactive immune system and a real immune disorder. But not, not with not, carnivora. Not carnivora is going to modulate true. the immune mm -hmm. system and not allow it to be too overactive or too underactive. No, yeah, that's amazing. All right. Now, I can tell you that people with allergies have been taking this product for over 35 years with great success. And the same pertains to autoimmune issues. I can't uh -huh, use that uh -huh. word, but... Well, that's why I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I know.